Now here to talk with us about the ovarian cancer data being presented here at ASCO is Dr. Michael Beer, who is the Medical uh, Director of Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Welcome Dr. Beer, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be here, thank you for inviting me. Of course. So uh, we're seeing a lot of intriguing data here at ASCO, especially in ovarian cancer. Can you discuss some studies that you're really excited about? Yeah, it's an interesting time. I think um, this ASCO would be best characterized not necessarily having one prominent uh, finding, but really sort of maturation in a number of different areas. So we, uh, we have a trial uh, that e evaluate the uh, role of secondary cytoreduction reduction uh, in ovarian cancer. And that's actually an important clinical uh, issue and, and uh, that should be presented tomorrow. Uh, I can tell you that it's um, uh, a negative trial. In fact, there is a suggestion that patients get surgery actually do poorer. Uh, so that's important for our management of our patients. And then, and then we have uh, a, a number of studies involved in um, bevacizumab, which is sort of, again, I call them, these are maturing studies. These are now fine tuning when we should use that agent. And then a whole plethora of interesting studies uh, using PARP inhibitors. Great. Now we're also getting results from the phase three study, a uh, uh, mitomango study exploring uh, chemotherapy with bevacizumab and platinum sensitive ovarian cancer uh, after a frontline bevacizumab containing therapy. So what are your thoughts on those findings? So mitomango, sounds like a fruit, right? <laughs> um, great study. We were all waiting for this uh, and you described it very accurately. This is really uh, what, what I would say bev after bev. Uh, and um, the take home message is that patients benefited by adding bevacizumab to their next th line of therapy, even if they had it initially. So this puts ovarian cancer, I think, sort of in the realm of colorectal cancer, right? Where it's bev, bev, bev. So um, what's gonna be really interesting is how this now evolves. So um, Genentech Roche is actually in front of the FDA uh, we should know in three weeks whether bevacizumab will be approved for frontline therapy. So if it's approved for frontline therapy, my guess is most patients will get it. That then makes the mitomango study actually quite relevant. Uh, but it's not an FDA registration study. So it'll be interesting to see how insurance companies handle this. I, I think that that is quite compelling, that patients benefit from receiving that drug again. Great. Now, PARP inhibitors are, are, of course, a very significant class of drugs in this field. What do you think is next for PARP inhibition? A lot of data on PARP, very exciting. Uh, new class of drugs for ovarian cancer. We have three approved drugs, so there's some competition, which is good. I think the field is going in two different directions. Both of them focused on expanding the use of PARP. So the first one is really determining who benefits. Now, a couple of the indications um, are basically all comers should get PARP. But a lot of us sort of feel that, that obviously the um, germline mutated patients and the somatic mutation patients benefit the most. Um, so I think you're going to see more work in terms of trying to define uh, the patient populations that benefit the most from PARP. And that's ongoing. That's going to be a molecular, sort of molecular testing. The second and very active um, area is PARP combinations. So, you know, I'd love to say there is um, really wonderful, sound, rational, scientific data to direct us. The truth is, PARP is being added to essentially every active drug in the uh, treatment of ovarian cancer. So the two big classifications are antiangiogenics. So you see BEV and, and PARPs, uh, at least two or three of those trials ongoing. And then uh, sidernib and uh, PARP inhibitors. And that's because sidernib uh, it has antiangiogenic activity. And those trials will be um, maturing probably in, over the next year, so we'll get a signal. The second class of, of um, combinations is IO, mm -hmm. immuno-oncology, immune right. checkpoint inhibitors plus PARPs. And the rationale there is that because ovarian cancer is a disease of DNA repair abnormalities, uh, the assumption is that the DNA will accumulate mutations, uh, and those mutations will create neoantigens, and neoantigens will make it immunogenic. The weakness of that argument is that uh, the type of DNA damage that HRD creates is really big pieces of DNA. It's not clear to me it's the same as smoking does for lung cancer. So we don't really know how this is going to play out, but you'll see um, anti-PD-1 combined with PARP inhibitors multiple trials, I can't even list them all, right. um, uh, but all very interesting. 
And again, just to fill it out so, so everybody knows, if you look at IO by itself in, in uh, ovarian cancer, the response rate's about 9%. So uh, we don't really know what's going to be coming down the pike, but it's going to be interesting. When you think of the future of ovarian cancer, just judging by the research being presented at this meeting, what does it look like to you? Well, I think that uh, it's a slam dunk that PARP inhibitors are here to stay, and they're going to move earlier and earlier. So Solo 1 and Prima are going to read out at the end of the uh, year. Okay. And I think most of us think that that's going to be a positive trial. So PARP, will be, uh, PARP inhibitors will be approved for uh, first-line maintenance, okay. so they move up earlier. Then the decision will be, and assuming that bevacizumab gets approved, which we all think will happen, we got this interesting clinical choice. What do we give our patients? Right. And my personal bias is that if you have a germline or a somatic mutation, you get PARP inhibitors. If you're wild type or HRD negative, you might benefit more from Bev. And then the next wave will be these combinations, which may mm -hmm. solve it. I mean, if we give everybody a PARB and bevacizumab, we don't need to think. <laughs> so that's what's coming. It's a very exciting time. Do you remember 15 years ago, we'd be sitting here arguing about IP versus IV, mm -hmm. uh, which got kind of boring. It's, uh, it's a great time uh, for physicians, a great time for ovarian cancer patients. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Bear. really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks. Exciting. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.